Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday evening uh, prayer service of the Gospel Assembly Church, Pune. Would like to uh, welcome all you saints, saints of the local assembly, and also our friends watching online. It's our prayer service today. I don't intend to speak long here, but just few things about prayer that the Lord has put upon my heart, and I hope that we all will be strengthened. We all will be uh, gripped by a. Uh, a desire or a closer walk with the Lord, a desire to get into His presence, a desire to uh, commune with the Lord and, and uh, get our ways, get our hearts, get our spirits right. Um, uh, every time and every day when we come uh, to the Lord in prayer. Uh, there's a scripture in Job, the 22nd chapter. Job chapter 22. This is uh, Elihu speaking to Job, I think this is the last uh, time Elihu speaks to Job. And after this he, uh, he stopped speaking to him and I believe the last few verses that Elihu spoke to him, uh, it's, really, uh, it's really worth reading and uh, meditating upon. But here in Job, Job the 22nd chapter in verse 21, it says, Acquaint now thyself with him, with God and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. She says, and I was meditating on this verse here, the scripture lets me know that God has called us to acquaint ourselves with him, to get accustomed to the Lord, uh, to, to get closer to him, acquaint uh, from which we get the word acquaintance, uh, the one that we are, uh, we are close to. See, it says, acquaint now thyself with the Lord. We are called to acquaint ourselves with the Lord, but, but uh, Christianity and the world has become so perverted that we all are more inclined to acquire things or to do things for the Lord or to accomplish some things in our lives where the main purpose of God creating us and sending us and giving us this life was to acquaint ourselves with him. It's not to acquire something in this world. A lot of, lot of us, a lot of people, I'm talking about uh, Christians that claim themselves to be uh, converted and believers and, and speak in tongues and receive the Holy Spirit, but still we live a life where we are more bothered and more concerned about acquiring things and accomplishing things in our lives, like some goals that we have set before us, short-term goals, long-term goals. Um, we want to accomplish those goals. Uh, we want to acquire wealth, we want to acquire fame, we want to acquire position, we want to acquire knowledge, even though it may be of the scriptures, we want to acquire more knowledge, we want to acquire wisdom, we want to acquire a ministry that the Lord can uh, use us and bless us, uh, we want to do all these things, but very few of us want to acquaint ourselves with the Lord. Well, since we all may not, may not have a ministry, uh, we all may not, 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 uh, may not be able to acquire things that other people do, uh, but since we all have been called to acquaint ourselves with the Lord. Uh, to join ourselves with him. That's what the word acquaint means. To join ourselves to him. To fall in with his will. To get in line with his will. To get in line with his interests. And no, and no longer act like strangers. Or act in opposition to God or his word or to his will. To acquaint with the Lord uh, means to not behave strangely with the Lord. But to, uh, and I, I, I take this as a privilege that the Lord has given all his children. See, it doesn't say that the Lord will acquaint himself with you. It's, it's our job, it's our responsibility, it's our duty to acquaint ourselves with the Lord. And it's a, it's a wonderful privilege to do that. Sense. And one way we can acquaint ourselves with God is through prayer. It's our prayer service tonight and I would like to encourage all of us here that, that prayer was designed by God so that we can have fellowship with Him. And not only so that I can take all my requests 
and I can take all my needs. That's a very selfish uh, definition of prayer. If prayer, if I treat prayer as something that I can only uh, uh, only look at it as something that 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 I can take my needs to the Lord, uh, that I can ask God for something, uh, that I can uh, ask God to intervene in some areas of my life and make life a little easy for me, then that's a very selfish way uh, to look at prayer. But but I think the reason why God designed uh, something such as prayer was for me and was for you, is for all of us to have fellowship with Him, to come into His presence and feel a desperate need for Him. To feel a desperate need for Him, not just our needs to be met. See, what's bigger? Is our need bigger or is God bigger? What's more important to us? A fellowship or having a communion with the Lord to get into His presence or to just have our needs met? What's important to me? Uh, to seek His grace or, 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 or to just to seek His favor? As we sing a song, seek the one who blesses, not just His blessings. See, what's important? Is God important to me or is His blessings? Or are, 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 uh, are my needs important to me? See, that's why God designed prayer that we can have a desperate need for Him and not just our needs to be met. And prayer, saints, makes me to recognize my helplessness and depend upon the Lord to work in me first and then my surroundings. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not for me to change God's mind or change God's will or to change situations around me. Prayer is for me to change. It's for me to get closer to the Lord, to acquaint myself with Him, to, to get, get, get in closer communion with the Lord, to work, work out something in my life first. See, it's for me to change first and then my circumstances. And when we come to the Lord in prayer, saints, let's not come with the preconceived answers in our mind. Oh Lord, I have this thing figure, figured out. I know who's going to help me. I know my deliverance or my help is going to come from such and such place. And I want you now to get it done. That's how many of us come to the Lord in prayer. We have something at the back of our mind that this is the way the Lord needs to work. This is the way the Lord needs to help me. And if that happens, only then my prayers will be answered. Any other way, well, I'm upset. That's, that's why I said, let's not come with preconceived answers that the Lord will work in a certain way or the Lord will work through a certain person. Let's not, go, let's not make God fit into our plans. Let's not God work according to our plans. But let us fit into God's plan. And let us work as per God's plan. That's why I said the scripture doesn't say that God will acquaint himself with you. The scripture says acquaint thyself with him. That's how, saints, that's, that's why God designed prayer. That's how we acquaint ourselves with the Lord. When we align ourselves, when we get, um, get one uh, with the Lord, for His will to be done in our lives. Unless we don't, don't come to this place in our lives, saints, God will not work. We need to come to an end of ourselves. We need to come to an end of depending on our own strength. Or on depending on something that we have done. Or on depending on some per person or some, some organization. Uh, we need to come to an end of our, ourselves and become empty. See, that's why God wants us to keep coming to Him. Why are some prayers not answered? Why does the Lord want us to keep coming to Him every day? Why does the Lord want us to keep knocking on that door and keep asking those same things or keep seeking those same things? You know why? Because He knows if I get an answer to that prayer, I'll never again come into His presence. Have we ever thought on that? 
that why does God delay our answers? Or why does, why does God not work uh, um, in, uh, in a certain area of our life? Because we are not ready yet. We still look unto God as a genie who has to come when we call, who has to do things when we say, and who has to, um, uh, who has to not, not interfere in our lives, but only come when we want him to come. Well, we will never be able to acquaint ourselves with the Lord because we are full of our own self, we are full of our own strength, own plans, own, own desires, and we still depend upon our own strength. And since if we are like this, we will never be able to acquaint ourselves with the Lord unless we are full of ourselves. Let's empty ourselves. It's when we come to the Lord in prayer, let's not come with preconceived notions or preconceived answers or this is the way God needs to work. Let's come to an end of our human understanding. Lord, we are helpless. Lord, there is nothing I can do in this area, in, in, in this situation. Lord, I am helpless. Father, it's only you and you alone. And if you want to do it, oh Lord, if you want to help me get through this, it's, it's okay. But oh Lord, never let me depart from your presence. That's, that's, that's the first thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do I seek the kingdom of God? What do what does it mean by seek you first the kingdom? Well, when it talks about a kingdom, that means there's a king there. I seek the king first. I come to the king, I seek to be with the king, and I don't care whether all other my other of my needs are met or no, but whatever God wants to add, He will add it to me. If if I only empty myself of myself. If I come to a, a come to a come to a level where I don't trust uh, on any uh, any plans that I have made for myself or any goals that I have uh, prepared for myself or any um, any person, uh, but I only depend on God and God alone. There's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a uh, instance here in Luke Luke chapter eight. We all know this, uh, this incidence here about this, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the woman that was, that, that had an issue of blood 12 years, Luke chapter 8 and verse 43. Uh, let's all uh, read these scriptures here in verse 43 onwards, Luke chapter 8. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, but, n but neither could be healed of any. She spent all her living. She came to an end of her living. And now there was no hope that she had in any of the physicians around her. She had no hope left. But Jesus was her only hope. She came to, the end, to an end of her, 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 uh, herself. She didn't want to end her life. She wasn't a coward that wanted to end her life. She had come to an end of all her plans and all her uh, her uh, her things that she had decided to do. But now Jesus was her only hope, and we know the story. And she had she she decided in her heart that if I only could touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Jesus is the only answer. Thing. And that's what, that's what we need to come to that level where we are empty of our own selves. The, again, there's a, there's a scripture here in John, the second chapter. I don't want to read all those scriptures, but we all know that story. The marriage, um, uh, the marriage at Cana in John chapter 2. Let's read those scriptures slowly uh, when we, when we, in our free time. Let's not rush through the scriptures. Let's read the scriptures slowly and understand what's written there. And I believe um, uh, there was a, a wedding in the in the city of Cana, and I believe the whole village was there. And and uh, and uh, we all know that 
uh, that story where the wine is almost coming to an end and Mary comes and tells Jesus that, uh, that uh, can you help, please help them, uh, they are running out of wine. And Jesus tells uh, to her, woman, what have I to do? What have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. What did Jesus say? My hour has not yet come. Uh, what did he mean by that? What I think is that Jesus knew that there are still some 8, 10, 12 glasses left of wine left there. He said, let it come to an end. Let it come to the last drop. Then I will do what is needed. They still depended, depended on those 8, 10 or 12 glasses of wine that were still there. He said, my hour is not yet come. My time is not yet come. I will come at the right time. And since so Jesus always comes at the right time. He always does. And if you see, this, this, this is the thread that, that, that goes through all the miracles. See, unless those people had, didn't come to an end of themselves, Jesus never came. God never intervened. Turn a few pages again to John chapter 5. Again, we, we know this is an important man sitting at the pool of Bethesda. Since I, I want to exhort all of us here that if we come to the Lord with, with something already conceived in our minds and hearts that this is the way the Lord has to work. Or I, I come to the Lord just because it's Wednesday night and I have to pray, but I still depend, heart in heart, I still depend on something or someone else. I have, that just means that I have not come to the end of myself. See? But here also it talks about this important man. At the pool of Bethesda, John chapter 5 and verse 2 1 was not there. Is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And the, in these lay a great multitude of important folk. Great multitude. Uh, Jesus, whoever said that Jesus went around healing everyone, well, this scripture proves it wrong. Jesus didn't heal. Great multitude, that means there were more than 100, 200 people uh, lying there. Important folk, and they couldn't do anything. Um, they, they, were, they were calling on one another to help them. Because an angel used to come at a certain time and, and stir the waters, and their strength was on someone. They depend on somebody to put them in the water. And this, this man, it says, where is that verse? Um, and a certain man was five. A certain man was there which had infirmity 38 years. This man was lying there for 38 years. Since it took him 38 years to come to an end of himself. 38 years. What did he do for all those 38 years? Every time there was time, it was time, it was around time for the angel to come and serve the water. He used to call on people. Please help me, please help me, put me in, put me in, somebody, uh, at least a couple of you come here and help me, come here and help me. He tried that for 38 years. But after 38 years, he said, I'm not going to call on anyone. And he says in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie, amidst all those great multitude sitting there, Jesus goes to this man. Well, he always comes at the right time, six. And he said he saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in this case, in that case, and he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? But this important man answered him, Sir, I have no man. See, this is the answer God expects from us. Sir, I have no one to help me. God, I have no one. I have no one to help me. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in, into the pool. But when I am I am trying, uh, when even I on my own try, somebody else comes and steps in before me. So I don't even depend on me now. I have no man, I don't depend on anyone, I don't trust anyone, and I don't depend on my own strength too. And what did Jesus say? Rise up. Take up thy bed and walk. Well, that's what Jesus is looking, looking, looking in us, saints. Are we ready to tell him that, Lord, I'm, I'm tired and I don't, I, 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 I don't
don't want the trust in Allah. Cursed is the man that trusted in Allah and make it make it man his strength. The scripture says, but blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and make it the Lord his strength. Well, this man had come to an end of himself. And we, uh, we, we, we need to come to an end of trusting in our own self and trusting in people around us. It took him 38 years to come to this understanding. And then Jesus came. Since when we come to an understanding that God and God alone can help us in some areas of our life, well, that's when Jesus will come. If you think, still think that you can handle that situation, if you still think that you can take uh, take matters in your own hands. If you still think, if we all still think that we can get things right, well, Jesus will never come. He'll never come. He always comes at the right time. Turn three or four pages to your right. John chapter eleven. You can see the same thing, saints. This is this is Lazarus now. This is Lazarus who dies, and we all know the story. Here in John chapter 11, Lazarus was sick, and his sisters Martha and Mary, was three, sends a sends message to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And when he heard that in verse 6, he's, he didn't go immediately, he waited there for two more days. Well, Jesus didn't come when I called him. Well, he knew that, that if he had gone there earlier, God's name wouldn't have been glorified. Since God's name is glorified, God's name was glorified when Lazarus died. God's name will be glorified in our lives when we die to self. And we will come to an end of trusting our own self and trusting what we have built for our own self. And that's what happened here, saints. And, and Jesus comes, this whole chapter here, it says, um, his, his sisters now then come to him, the Lord, if you had been here earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. Verse 21, Martha tells Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. And then we all know, we all know, saints, Lazarus was dead now four days. Four days, he was in the tomb already. And, 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 and there was no coming back, there was nothing left in Lazarus to resurrect himself. And there was nothing left with the physicians, there was nothing left with Mary and Martha. Everyone was helpless and there was nothing anyone could do. And when there was nothing anyone could do, Jesus came in. Well, he always comes at that time, saints. He always. Jesus waits even today till we empty ourselves of ourselves. And we empty ourselves of all our plans and preconceived answers to our prayers. And we live a life of total dependence on Him. A life of total dependence on the Lord. Not depending on our own strength. Not depending on what we have acquired in our life. Not de depending on our accomplishments or our past glory. But acquainting ourselves with the Lord. How can we acquaint ourselves with the Lord? By emptying our own self and depending on God to do it for me. Abraham knew he had come to an end of himself. There was no way Isaac could have, could have born. There was no way. Sarah passed the age of bearing children. Passed the age. There was no way Sarah could bear a child. There was no way. And when there was no way humanly possible for Abraham and Sarah to bear a son, God intervened at that time. As long as since we try to do things, oh, I can handle that, I can handle my children, I can handle my son, I can handle my daughter, 
I'll see to it that they turn, I'll see to it that they obey me whether well, there was time to, 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 to instruct them and correct them. We didn't do it, but now as they grow, saints, let's give them in the hands of the Lord. As long as we try to correct, oh, I'll see to it that that, that man uh, comes and falls at my feet. I'll work on my husband. I'll work on my wife. I'll see to it. Well, we will see to it that nothing will happen. In fact, it will get worse and worse and worse. But saints, let's come to a, a, a point in life. Where, where we, Lord, there's nothing that I can do. Lord, but I just trust in you. I trust in you. If it's your will, O oh God, let this be done. If it's not your will, help me to accept. Help me to acquaint myself with you. Help me to have a closer communion, a closer fellowship with you. Irrespective of what happens, Lord, I still want to have that close acquaintance with you every day of my life and Enoch walked with God Abraham walked with God see they had a close association with the Lord they depended they joined themselves to the Lord they depended on him for everything saints let's 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 be like that like those men let's be examples of people of men and women who depend on God. Uh, it's not that we, we stop working and we don't do anything. No, not saying that. But there are some areas of our lives that we cannot do anything since. We cannot do anything. Let's accept it that we are important in those areas of our lives. And let God come and take control. This is the chorus was saying, more of you. More of you, I've had all. But what I need is just more of you. Of things I've had my full, but yet I hunger still, empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer. Unless we are empty and bare, unless we are empty and honest when we come to the Lord. Lord, I am empty, Lord. I don't I don't have to figure anything out, the Lord. And I come to you honestly, O Lord. This is what I have done. Lord, I am bear. I, all things are naked, the scripture says, before his eyes. Lord, I come to you empty and bare. Lord, please hear my prayer. But whether you hear my prayer, answer it or not, I want more of you. Well, let's acquaint ourselves with the Lord's saints. Let's take this opportunity of a Wednesday night here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's acquaint ourselves with, the, with him. And may the Lord bless all of you. May the Lord bless each and every one of you saints. We have some, some needs that we have to pray for. Let's not um, uh, forget to pray for the Swami as there was a message in the church group. We all know it by now that, that uh, the doctors are operating him. They, they uh, were operating him in the afternoon. Don't know whether the operation is over yet. But the doctors think that they have to um, put a pacemaker. That is the only way out. But saints, let's trust in the Lord. The Lord, uh, even the doctor's mind, the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. Let the doctors take the right decision. We don't trust those doctors, but we trust our omnipotent God. He knows what's best. So let's continue to remember with the Swami in our prayers. And let's continue to ask Lord's favor upon his life. And uh, whatever the Lord's will is, let the will of the Lord be done. And uh, let's pray for all the prayer requests mentioned on the church group. May the Lord bless all of you. Let's continue to have a fervent desire, saints, to, to acquaint ourselves with the Lord. Let's continue to have our minds on the Lord. Let's continue to have, uh, have God's ways, um, uh, ways in our hearts. And let's, let's follow the Lord. Uh, let's follow the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's, um, let's walk in the Spirit. Let's be led by the Spirit. And the Lord will help each and every one of us. Amen. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you once again for this time that you've given us to walk into your sanctuary here. And for all the saints watching us online, hearing these words of Father, I know that you are still the same God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you're still the same God that wants us to be empty of our own self. 
Lord, I don't want us to be dependent on our own strength, but for by strength, your word says, shall no man prevail. Lord, we are trying to prevail by our own strength. We are trying to prevail by our own wisdom. Lord, we shall never prevail. Help us, O oh Lord, to come to an end of our own strength, an end of our own wisdom, and help us, O oh Father. Our help is in you. You are our rock, you are our refuge, you are our shield, and you are our buckler, O oh Lord. In thee, we trust and we will trust all the days of our lives. We pray for all the prayer requests here tonight. Especially with us, Swami, get me a touch him, Father. Lord, we still depend upon you and you alone. Though the doctors are just the medium that you will use, O oh Father, to heal your child. We depend upon you to touch him and strengthen him and make him whole. O oh, Father, continue to be with that family and help them. And be with all the saints that have their requests, Lord, unspoken requests. Needs, O oh Lord, physical healing, O oh Father, in their bodies. O oh Lord, take care of each and every child of yours. And we pray for the church, the body of Christ, throughout the ministry. Be with all your children, all the ministers, every, every church in the fellowship. Lord, help us to acquaint ourselves with you more and more every day of our lives. And be at peace with your will and your work. Not to struggle with it, O Lord. But whatever you do, help us to be at peace with you and your will in our lives and thereby good shall come unto us. Be with us, O oh Father. We come in ourselves and our goings in your precious hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.